Okay, so this is day two of uh, Mishle 23, uh, 29 through 30. I hope that my voice holds out. <laughs> this does not bode well. This is the first time I've uh, talked out loud other than whispering today. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay, so uh, let's review what we did yesterday. All right, uh, and this is, so this is the first two so in a local cluster of six. Lemi oi, lemi avoi, lemi midyanim, lemi siach, lemi p'tsayim chinam, lemi chachlilas enayim. So this is a uh, claim shot is uh, six questions. Okay, uh, to whom oi, to whom avoy, and those are two interjections, to whom uh, midyanim are conflicts, quarrels, strife, fighting, whatever it is, to whom speech, and uh, I think let's go with, uh, I think we liked uh, prattling speech, I mean, like just going on and on and on, to whom uh, needless wounds, to whom bloodshot eyes, the answer is to those who um, come to investigate, sorry, to those who linger over wine, to those who come to investigate from mixed, let me say it again, to those who linger over wine, to those who come to investigate from mixed wine, okay, or to those who test the mix of wine. Okay, so we had a bunch of questions here. Okay, so main question is what are these six qualities, uh, especially oi and avoy, which are the most vague. Um, and then in terms of particular questions, um, uh, siach usually is just stam conversation or it's positive. So what is the bad kind of siach? Um, regarding Midyanim, who is this person in conflict with? Uh, what form does the quarrel take? Uh, what, who is being wounded needlessly and who's doing the wounding? Is it the drunkard? Uh, you know, and is it getting into fights with people? Is it falling and scraping himself? You know, um, is it, does he wounding other people? Are other people wounding him? Is it a fight? Okay, fine. Then we have, what is so bad about these things, right? Some of them are bad, like getting wounded needlessly, but, you know, redness of the eyes. Okay, fine. So your eyes are red, right? Big deal. Uh, so what are the consequences? And again, we, the, the, what are the consequences? We kind of have to like keep on the back burner in the sense that it's possible that the other um, four took him after this are really spent on the consequences. And, and the goal here is not to do that, but we have to keep in mind, maybe this is some level of consequence. Three, what is the relationship between the two psukim, um, you know, and why can't you swap them, right? Like, um, I guess really that applies. I don't know what I had in mind when I said, why can't you swap them? Yeah, I don't know what I mean. All right. Um, uh, okay. Are the activities in 30 in positive Lama being done by the same person or are those two different kinds of people or two aspects of the same activity? And what is being in investigated here? Are you investigating the wine or are you investigating something else from a wine session? Um, five, who is the audience? I think this is the other most important question here. So if you're talking to a drunkard, the question is how far gone is he? So, um, and what would be the Mishlaic threshold between a Mishlaic problem and like a pathology, you know? And again, keeping in mind that it's possible that, you know, they didn't know anything about, um, uh, you know, the science of addiction back then. So I don't think they knew, for example, I mean, whatever, I don't even know how relevant that is. But like, if you're talking to someone who is, you know, powerless over alcohol, it's possible Mishlai is not gonna help. Um, but uh, so are you talking to that guy? Are you talking to someone who's on his way there? Are you talking to a person who just likes wine, but you're pointing out the drunkard? Uh, and then uh, six is, are the items in Huff test in a specific order? Um, also, is this a comprehensive list? That's a good question whenever you see Michelin doing a list. Um, and then seven, can we explain the need for a riddle format of presentation? Okay, so I don't know how many people listened to the little voice message from my friend that I sent uh, yesterday, um, but he said that, um, well, I should have listened to it this morning to review it. I think the main point, I'm not going to play it now. The point was that the, um, it, uh, it's a, the diluting of the wine is primarily a matter of taste. Um, that like, and it was considered extremely crude to just like, you know, drink the wine undiluted. Is that one of the things of the Ben Sora Mora? That he drinks, um, no, it's Yaimi Gitto, right? It's like young wine, right? Like pure wine? Uh, uh, or like immature wine, I think. Hmm. Yeah, if I'm if I remember correctly. I know in uh, with like Don Cosos. Right, that's what we brought up yesterday. Is that you have to mix it well? Yeah. Um, okay, fine. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, what approaches did we take yesterday? I don't remind. Yeah, what was yours? Remind me. <laughs> 
that this is, that this is talking to someone who is mm. uh, like hyper fixates on wine. And, right. And ah, that's right. They're not an alcoholic, but they're just somebody who sort of has a vaguely unhealthy relationship with wine. Yeah, right. <laughs> where, for example, at a meal, they're not looking at the wine as a means to enjoy the meal, but right. looking at the meal as a means to. It's like a ticket to the wine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Mat here. So right. it's, it's saying to that person, you know, stop here. Don't yeah. go any further. And and the reason it's giving this format is because it's, it's like, look at this horrible person. You don't want to be him. And it's like, that's right. got to be you. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, and then that paired well with Ariel's thing, which is that you are talking about the alcoholic uh, in 29, but you're not talking to the alcoholic. You're talking to the guy who, who yeah. could easily, right. like, it could devolve into that if, you, if he's not careful. Right. So that was one approach. Um, David asked the question of, uh, David said that Loth Kormi Masach sounds like you're just like, curious about the wine you're not actually like partaking of it so i think that's something to keep in mind and then we also said this does not sound like a guzzler like you know in um in uh 23 where was it uh 21 um zolel and 20 yeah oh yeah you're sorry soviet yain Right. Um, so Yain is a guzzler. So that's a person who's just who just wants to get drunk. This sounds like someone who's doing it in a more refined way, uh, both because he is. Um, well, I guess the primary reason is because if he's inquiring as to the mix, that would seem to be he's trying to get it to taste the best possible. Um, he's not just like guzzling it mindlessly. And then Ma'ahima Yain to me. You know, that could be someone who's like just drinking all night, but it could also be someone who is like having a prolonged session of like, you know, like a a, a symposium or something. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Yeah. So I, I think that's to me that's that's lend support of what you're saying because 29 does not sound like someone who's engaging in wine in a refined way, but 30 yeah. is. And so I think it, it lends support to the idea that you're warning the guy who's like whose relationship to wine is masked by this veneer of oh i'm i'm you know i'm, I'm doing this in a, in a sophisticated way or whatever you know like the guy who's like going to the wine tastings and like you're supposed to like swish it and then spit it but then he finds himself like oh, i'll just swallow you know and then, and then he goes on and on yeah okay anyone else anything else before we go to the margin uh, <coughs> yeah um, so again i don't know what we went through yesterday sure but um I know that in uh, one of the offerings, siyachs. Like oh yeah, siyachs of the same. You're right. That is another negative connotation, right? Yeah. So I think that fits in with the like mindless uh, speech. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. So um, I found uh, in the archives uh, that I did write about this a long time ago, um, and uh, the there's two things I want to share with you: the idea, but I also want to share the methodology. So and because maybe the methodology will spawn something else, I'll share the methodology first. So the methodology I had was looking at these six and saying, is there a common denominator? Okay, now I think the reason why we didn't even explicitly ask that is because we just looked at it as these are obviously symptoms or signs of an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. But is there some, you know, there are lots of, of like, you know, things that uh, come from alcohol that, uh, that, you know, you could have listed here. Um, but the question is, is like, can we pinpoint a one cause that leads directly to these things instead of just saying, oh, alcohol, you know, so that, that's the question that uh, I would pose. I mean, these are all sort of um, things that other people would see. It's right. Not, it's not right. like, it's not like, let's say like nausea. Right. right? That's not like that the person. That's a good point. You. It's things that other people. <laughs> okay. That's a good, that, yeah, I mean, that's actually good. And that's not the approach I took, but I, when uh, Ariel pointed that out yesterday, uh, that did seem to me to be a fruitful approach. Mm -hmm. So I think we should uh, we should consider that for a candidate for for an idea. <clears throat> I mean, that is an interesting thing also, which is that um, just to play off of the uh, observations we made here, this person is framing their uh, relationship with wine in a certain way, which is it's a sophisticated luxury activity. And sometimes what ends up happening is that your, um, your what do you call it? Um, the way that you frame the thing might start off as true, but then it gets out of sync with the way that other people are framing you, you know? So like the best example of this 
I think this might actually be in one of the writings of the guy who started Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I saw it quoted that um, there was a doctor who, I, for, I forgot the details, something like, like he would, you know, he started off just like drinking or whatever. And then like he would drink a lot, he would like binge drink. But then I guess because of his work schedule, then he realized that like, you know, he needed to be um, uh, like alert and, uh, and, and, you know, able to like go into work and, and not be uh, incapacitated or even like detected uh, in terms of his uh, drunkenness uh, the next day. So like when it got, it got, so like at first he just tried to control the drinking, then it got worse and worse and worse. So then he, what he realized is he said, Oh, I can pump my stomach, you know? So he would like binge drink and then he would like pump his stomach at night. And then he said, one day it dawned on him, this is not what normal people do, <laughs> you know? So what had happened was he had framed it as, oh, I have like an evening, uh, uh, you know, drink or whatever. Oh, I saw another one. I saw another book, a thing in a book I was reading last night um, that this, uh, oh, it was last, whatever. This, um, this woman, also a nurse was, uh, was talking about she went in to get help for uh for like uh alcoholism but she said i don't really have a problem i just have two glasses and uh, uh you know i just have my two glasses is my normal amount and then like the person who was like talking to her found out that it was like two glasses every night and that the glasses were glasses that were big enough that she would have a full bottle every night okay so but she you know it's like the people who hold that like uh, you don't have to wash uh on uh on pizza if it's uh one slice and they have like a giant like, you know it's like she's just defining it in a way where like you know uh where 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 to any observer it would be obvious that she has a problem but because she's defined it this way that she can't see the problem so that that i think i'm talking myself into an idea here which is that that this is not the approach that i took but these are six signs that um that will identify you as having a drinking problem to other people. So, so I think your move that you said about like, this is you, the, the move for, for 30, it's talking to that person who he's not defining himself as someone who is like getting into like needless scuffles and like having bloodshot eyes. He's defining himself as a sophisticated drinker. But the point is like, you should be able to step outside of yourself and then look at how this looks from the outside. And that could be like a, a, a red flag that you have a problem. You know, this is like a technique. I, I think this is not unique to alcohol. I think this is uh, good for any addiction that that is fed by a certain self image that you have to like ask yourself, what am I in the eyes of other people? outside of the way that I'm defining myself, you know, and uh, is this something that is, uh, you know, let's say, for example, let's say like you are a workaholic, you know, so you tell yourself you're just putting in extra hours at the office and like whatever, but then you ask other people and you're like, this is a guy who never spends time with his family, you know, like that could be a, uh, that outsider's perspective could give you like a wake up call because you're so in the tunnel vision of how you define yourself that that like you're just missing the actual signs you know the thing uh, yeah yeah another idea yeah um the, not the same but doesn't argue with it explicitly is that the reason that this is like external things is because if because the point of this is, is to it's for this guy to look at other people and say i don't want to be that right so he can't correct he, if it was like nausea <laughs> and stomach problems yeah. or whatever he that that, that wouldn't be so relevant to him, right but for it to be something that's like very visible and obvious, right? That's something that he's going to see and not want. Yeah, himself. that's good. That's a good point. Yeah, that's right. I think that's why it's kind of like in this yeah. fashion where like the first parts are like these things that no one wants any of those. Right, you know, exactly. Like, yeah, no one's going to sign up for that. And then, <coughs> and then like the last post is like, oh, like, it's just like this thing. Yeah, it's right. So bad. Yeah, like, innocent little uh, thing. Yeah. Innocent, yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah, like, a very good like, rhetorical like, way to deliver the tokaha. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac. Um, and just the payback on or form of thing. Um, it, it doesn't even point out things like, let's say, like, you know, like marital problems, you know, like, like it's, you know, like, like, you know, or like, the, you know, that he's not spending time with his family, that he was affected right. by his relationships, because that's not as visible. Right. Yeah. yeah even, um, even the, uh, what do you call the problem that I mentioned earlier in 21 of the being clothed in rags? Um, is something that like you could go for a long time without actually getting to that point, you know, like that is more of a like 
behind closed doors type problem, whereas this is something that is manifest, you know, on a immediate uh, surface level basis. Yeah, okay. Okay, any other uh, approaches for what unifies them? So we have the unifi unification of these are all um, externally visible. That was, good, uh, that was a good idea. Okay, so I'll, I'll share with you the approach I took, but I got I think I got it from the Malbin. So I'm gonna read to you the way the Malbin reads the Pasuk, even though I don't take his idea, but it's a very creative way to read the Pasuk. And the thing I'm trying to get out of it, he's not in the packet. Uh, the thing I'm trying to get out of it is how he defines avoid. Okay, um, uh, so hold on just a second here. Uh, okay, so he says, maybe we'll, we'll read it and try to find him and then we'll do mine. Let me, oi, let me, uh, sorry, let me, oi, let me, avoy. Im tishal, let me, oi, ashiv lecha, let me, avoy. So he, the way he's going to read it, I'll just say it right now. The way he's going to read it is question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. So to whom, oi, the answer is to whom, avoy. To whom, Midianian, the answer is to whom Siah. Okay, so, so that's how he's going to read it. Um, so he says, um, so if you ask to whom oi, Ashiv Lacha, I'll answer you, Lemi Avoy. So what is Avoy? Shu Tava Vacheshik Hamis Ave. So Avoy is expressing, it's an, an interjection that expresses Taiva and yearn, the yearning of the lustful person. Okay, so. Um, uh, can you can we think of an English expression for avoy that is an uh, uh, an interjection expressing like uh, taiva? I have one. It's but a funny you one. Want to get it, or that you don't, you're being frustrated in your efforts. To get it. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> so the expression I came up with is all oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's like the, what the what Taiva gets when the, what's, what he says when he when the object of his Taiva presents itself. Okay, so that, that's how I would translate it in, in uh, modern terms. Okay, so Mishishlo Avoy Vatava, someone who has Avoy and Taiva. And by the way, I think he might be getting it from um, Aleph Vav, sorry, Aleph Bet He Ava is uh, is Taiva, which is related to Aleph Vav He, but uh, I think he might be getting it from that. So Someone who has um, a voy and taiva, lo oi, he will have woe. Okay, he'll have like sorrows. Um, if you ask who has quarrels, shame dinim vatainos. So I think I, when he says dinim vatainos, I think he means arguments. Um, I don't know if it's like court arguments, court cases, but arguments. I'll answer you, uh, I'll answer you who has conversation. Rak kfi pletas dimionosav. So siach is speech without intelligence. That is just an expression of your imaginations. Hamarbe siach marbe midyanim varif. Someone who is who prattles on and on, just saying whatever comes to his mind, is going to have a lot of uh, quarrels. Vim tishal lemi pitzayim chinam. And if you ask who has needless wounds, ashi b'cha mi asher chachlilas enayim. I'll answer you. Someone who has redness of the eyes. Vim tishal. Mia ish asher lo chachlilas enayim. Uh, so that's, he, he breaks the pattern. And if you say, who is the one who has bloodshot eyes? Ashiv Lecha, I'll answer you. Lama achim al yain, the achar she'ichru kola layla lishtos yain. So he's talking about someone who drinks all night. Um, so like partying. Az heim bayim mechadash lachor mi mesach, lachor es hamozig she'odeh limsoch hayain hetev. He'll ask the, the, um, the uh, what you, mixologist, right? Um, <laughs> the, the bartender. Um, uh, how to mix wine in a good way. Uh, and then he'll drink again. Okay. All right. So I don't know what idea he's getting at, but here's what I got. And now this is a warning. I think I wrote this in 2007. So I was very, very steeped in Freudian terminology here. So that's why it's going to sound very Freudian. Um, so here was my four sentence. Well, this is not a four sentence summary. This is just a regular summary. So who cries oi, who cries all oh, yeah, who is contentious, who rambles, who is needlessly wounded, whose eyes are red, those who linger over wine, those who come to acquire or mixed drinks. Intoxication has six effects, each of which is represented by these six expressions. Okay, so I tied them all. Okay, whatever. So you'll see. Who cries oi? The latent frustration of not getting what you want is agitated by incapacitation of your reality principle and the inflation of your ego, right? So wine 
inflates the ego and lowers your reality principle, your ability to like make rational decisions. Okay, so that's the, the but the oi is the suffering that comes from that. It's like a, it, it amplifies the victimhood of the, of the ego. And this is why, for example, when people, I mean, this is why bar fights start, but like, this is also why um, uh, it's a, you know, there's, what do you call it? There's like happy drunks and sad drunks. The sad drunks, it magnifies all of the problems that they're having, you know, and and they're all like, uh, you know, why me and all, and and like, this is horrible. My, my life is terrible, you know. All right, who cries all? Yeah, the instinctual appetitive part of you becomes louder and more demanding once it is no longer kept in check by the superego. Right, so that's the lowering of the, the job of the superego is to, check your desires uh, and, and your impulses. But when you lower your ambitions, obviously then you will, you'll act on your desire. Um, who is contentious? The more inflated your ego is, the more sensitive it will be to perceived insults. And without the constraint imposed by your super ego, aggressive retaliation is more likely. So you're gonna get into fights because you're gonna get insulted more and there's gonna be nothing holding you back from acting on your aggressive retaliatory impulse. Who rambles? Inflated egos like to hog, oh wait, where did I pause? Oh yeah, sorry. I forgot to read the title. Intoxication, the unfettered ego. The, the unifying force here is the unfettered ego. Mm -hmm. um, okay, who rambles? Inflated egos like to hog the spotlight. And once the social restraints are removed, you'll engage in nonstop broadcasting of your own thoughts and feelings with, without regard for your audience. So you just talk on and on and on without reading social cues, without like actually like even checking to see whether what you're saying makes sense. Who's needlessly wounded? Big egos feel invulnerable. How can reality possibly harm the great me? Okay, um, that was a phrase I got from uh, my Rabbi Sachs, who would say uh, that you know the uh, Yetzirah is identifies itself as Galu Gibor Nora, right? I am the great, mighty, and, and awesome one, you know, and like nothing can nothing can harm me. And that's also why people engage in reckless behavior when they uh, when they are intoxicated because they feel like nothing bad can happen to them, no, no harm can befall them. And whose eyes are red? For a big ego, oh, so I, I interpreted this not as bloodshot eyes. Uh, I said, for a big ego, ordinary disappointments and failures become blown out of proportion, leading to histrionic crying, melodrama, and depression. So that that was the, um, uh, so I guess just to differentiate, oi is the amplification of the, um, of, uh, sorry, that's, I, I misspoke. Oi is, I don't get what I want, and it causes me pain. But the eyes being red is the depression and amplification of the uh, of, of suffering and failures and sadness and all that stuff. Yeah, so that was how I, I interpreted it um, to unify the uh, the six. Yeah. Did you get the bloodshot eyes crying from anyone? Um, I think I did. Um, it sounds like Leia. Uh, it does sound like her, yeah. So the difficulty, which I found when I was reading okay. Sadiagon, which uh, we're not going to read now because he interprets all of them together, he says that the term chachlilas inayim is only used in two places. There's the bracha in this week's parsha, which is good, and then there's our case here. So we really don't have much to work with, which gives us a certain freedom. Um, but uh, but I, I think I was just saying your eyes could get red because you're crying, also, you know. Right. Um, so yeah, sure. yeah, sure. okay. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, so it's interesting, Rabina Yona does not interpret, oh, he does, I just missed it. Okay, let's, let's see what he says on Chavtes uh, and Lamed. Lemi oi, lemi avoy. Al avono ve'al chataso, on, yeah, it's on the left column, uh, on his iniquity and on his sin. Ki ayayin maybe as adam lide zima, interesting. So, Yain will bring a person to sexual promiscuity. He's probably trying to connect this. Oh, he says, yeah. So that's why it's connecting this to the zona and the nakriya. <coughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, to, um, you know, it's funny. Uh, it's not funny. It's sad. What's good? <laughs> um, uh, I think, I don't not being, I don't know who hangs out with who, but like I can speak for myself. The only context in which I ever really see alcohol is like on, you know, Shabbos and Yom Tov in like a Jewish setting. It's easy for me to forget because of that, that like how much alcohol is tied to sexual promiscuity and to sexual bad decisions in like the world, you know, like so much of, I mean, especially in, modern world where women are drinking with men which i don't think was always the case like in uh like even you know in the Purim story then uh you know Akshver had a, or Vashi had a separate mishde nashim you know like it is you know it is crazy how 
like from the man's angle and from the woman's angle, how many like unwanted like sexual uh, like uh, you know liaisons, escapades, whatever happened because of wine. So like I, I just I didn't even that didn't even occur to me when I was reading this, even though we had the previous possible, But it's a good uh, good call from Vinyona. Okay, let me meet your name. Did you skip one? Where's me down the next one? Mm, I think it's, no, 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 okay. Okay. Gam yolid hayan riva. So it's also going to uh, give rise to anger and uh, quarreling. So anger is another inflated ego uh, symptom. Let me see. Gam gorem la adam la harbos divine. It's going to cause a person to uh, be excessive in speech. Kenyan chenemar home shechar. So uh, drink, shechar uh, uh, causes you to cry out. Let me put time chinam. Rov mishtayayan yoli tachaluyin. Oh, interesting. Begoof Adam. So he's, he's learning as diseases. That's weird. Petza, I thought, is a wound. Strange that he learns as uh, diseases. It says in 36, uh, footnote 36, Ngitin ayin amad aleph, Shmona, shmona ruban kasha umiutan yafe, eluhin yayin, hule varashi sham umiut yafe, kish adam ma'ad mehem, yafe lagufa lurufu, vatovshi helo kitsas, Okay, fine. So he's just bringing a proof that if you have a lot of wine, that makes you sick. But a little bit is good. A little bit is good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they they, they held that like wine helps you uh, digest uh, and other like good stuff. Also, it warms you. They had a whole thing about warmth. It's actually in the warm. Yeah, yeah, right. It makes you colder, I think, yeah. right? Because it makes your blood vessels. It makes you like, um, I think it makes you like sweat more than like, or like, uh, I don't remember, but like it ends up making like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were you were going to say something, Isaac? Yeah. It might not mean, you know, infectious diseases, but it can cause, it can right. cause, you know, harm that, like, That's you know. True. Yeah. Yeah. Or similar. Right. Okay. Let me chatli this in I'm Yolid Admimus Bene Haram. It will give rise to redness in the eyes of people. Okay. It's unclear what he's saying. I assume that's bloodshot. Let's see what the punchline is. Um, is it on the right side? Oh, is there no Rabbeinu Or is it on the next page? Yeah. Okay. Yain. So these are people who are excessive in wine parties. Okay. So they do not dilute it with water to diminish the power of the wine, only to make it taste better. Uh, and they, they're investigating the proper measure to improve the taste of the wine. Yes, yeah, so do we get any new ideas from here? Or is this just giving us particulars and we have to assemble our own ideas? <coughs> I think so also. Yeah, the only thing, new thing we're getting in terms of the audience here is people who are excessive in wine. Okay, let's look at the um, Um so even though he takes this all as one chunk, we can read the his commentary on the first two. So after rebuking him about the zona, he rebukes him on wine. And he uh, he goes on at length because it's something that's addictive and causes you to sin. More so than the other pleasures. So that's definitely true. Um, Avoy who kmo oi, ella shumora al mispe vialola. Okay, so um, so it indicates uh, like uh, eulogizing and bewailing. Midianim pirusha marivos the siach lashon kina. Midianim is um, quarrels and the siach is lashon of lamentation. Minyan arid besichi. Okay, so he's focused. He's going up on the sadness thing here. Let me p'taim chinam razon b'pshiaso uber difaso achre diritohu. That's also interesting. So you're going to get hurt because you're chasing after nonsense uh, things. That's weird. So not like a uh, lowered sense of vulnerability, but in terms of what it makes you chase after. I, I don't know what he's talking about. Idea. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I don't know what how he's how literally he's saying petza. Does that mean it like hurts in the long run? That's what it sounds like, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm nearly Oh, so maybe that's where I got it from. Crying a lot. Um, yeah, so he's really going on the sadness angle. Kenyan shar uh, like uh, hashalos, like other 
comparisons. Meheshiv lekulam, and he's answering to all of them. Lemaachim al yain klamar kol elu laosan lemaachim sheves. Those who prolong their sitting. Ratalamar shenosnim laatzmam mitun upnai b'shusiyat yain. They give themselves a lot of like uh, time and freedom in their drinking of wine. And then he says a laws thing, which I tried asking people on Facebook, uh, no, one, no one answered yet. Uh, I don't know, this is an old proven, proven call, Shlidi Dantz. I don't know So he says it's any beverage that requires mixing. Uh, but here it said about wine commotion, that's a synecdoche, I think. Um, okay. Ah, so He's saying Lachor is saying, where can I get the best wine? So they're in pursuit of wine, okay? Um, meaning it's not occurring at the bar, right? Where he's like saying, what, what's the best uh, beverage, uh, best mix? Um, some learn Lachlius and I was the beginning of the answer. Um, so that's a different way of reading it, which is saying, five questions and then the answer is to the bloodshot eyed person who stays uh, up uh, who like is involved in a lot of drinking and, and looking more to get the next wine okay so then he says um he goes on to the next person that's too bad all right it's possible that that, that we're, we're going to keep on meeting these dead ends here um unless we go on to the next person uh let's just see if there's anyone else who has something uh what about um, the Derek Um, I kind of want to say that till we get the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, all six. Yeah, all six. Yeah. All right. Let's do. Um, who else would be good here? Let's do. Um, Sudri Nachmias. We don't. We don't give him enough to do. Okay. Sudri so Nachmias. Remember, so Rina Khmiyas's thing is he quotes other Rishonim, but he also quotes Chazals. And occasionally he'll say his own thing. 29. So it's, it's like he's warning about guarding yourself from wine, or he's calling out what happens, like the, the you know, what will befall you. Oh, that's interesting. It comes from Evion, which is poverty. oni. So who has poverty? Okay, that's wow. See, this is everyone's interpreting uh, uh, avoid differently. Um, like he supports from above. Okay, so it causes uh, fighting. Okay, same thing. Um, sometimes can be kas. Okay, let me, I'm just uh, looking for new stuff. Let me, uh, is it on the left or on the right? Left. Uh, no, right. Ah. Let me, both, I guess. Um, because of a Rambat, um, that is not a Rambat, where's the Rambat like this? Oh, and Brashi on our Parsha. Okay, we got a Dvar Torah here. All right, um, he says, Chachlilus <laughs> Kamot, Kihalilos or ka, I think. Shinyano, oh no, yeah, kihulos beyond Tommy. Does it mean? I think it's like you're making it regular. It's Could be. Um, let's say, Kiyayan Yashich Enehem, Vyuridu Dima, Vitimakna Bechorehen. I think he's learning like um, from Halal, like uh, uh, holes or hollows. Um, uh, it makes your eyes like they're hollow. Because he's, he's, he's saying that because wine darkens the eyes. Darkening the eyes means like makes you sad. Um, and it makes you shed tears. Um, okay. means to put makeup on your eyes. We said to cover it up. I guess so. Yeah. I, he might mean like. Um, What's the, there's a word in English for this. When someone is crying a lot, not gaunt, but like gaunt of the eyes, you know, like, like their eyes look kind of like, uh, this is a word I'm, I'm searching for, I can't find it. 
Let's see. English in Yana Kachalos. You want? We can just look this up in the English Rambam. Make sure we're getting this right. For the. Uh, okay, so oh my goodness, lots of stuff on the brachos. <laughs> um, okay, he says, so he quotes our pasuk. Uh, he says it's with the letters inverted and also refers to eyeshadow. Mm. There you go, Mika. Um, scripture is saying that the drunkard's eyes are painted with wine. Oh, painted, they're like they're painted with wine, uh, as it were, for he cannot conceal his drunkenness. Alternatively, scripture is saying, who has uh, of the eyes, meaning that he must constantly paint his eyes. Those who linger over wine. I've never seen a Ramban interpretation of Mishle before. <laughs> so, so bizarre. Um, uh, for the wine they drink profusely will cause their eyes to become dark and tear and melt away in their sockets. Okay, I don't think, that, I don't think that's literal. Um, so that the drunkard will require that his eyes should be constantly painted with a brush to make them look pleasant. Scripture thus speaks of the disgrace of overindulgence in wine, listing that the evils that befall him from the outside through quarrels and injuries. Um, um, uh, yeah, and that those that befall him indoors, that he constantly hears woe and alas in his house. So it's coming from the other people in his house. So that is talking about how it disrupts your family life. And that it mentions this damage from drinking that happens to him in his own body, namely the darkening of his eyes and the many sicknesses of the eyes that will afflict him, uh, requiring constant cosmetic correction. This is a sound and uh, interpretation and concept. Uh, so where does he learn the, the bracha as? Does it, does it say that at the end? Yeah. He says, <laughs> yeah. Like, this is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's always funny when the himself on the back. Yeah. Yeah. But so now, now I'm wondering, why would he... Um, I have to read what he's saying about the bracha, right? So th this is in the bracha to, uh, who is this to? Uh, Yehuda. This is part of a longer bracha, but he says for Yehuda, so the beginning of the commentary, he says, the commentary say that the word chachlili is a word that expresses the idea of redness. Uh, thus the phrase means that Judah's eyes will become red from drinking much drinking of wine. Um, it seems to me, however, that chachal, ches, chaf, lamed, the root of this word is an inversion of the root chaf, ches, lamed, kachal, from the phrase, you painted your eyes. As for the second lamed in chachlili, the lamed of the last letter of the root has been doubled as it's customary with many words. It is related to the word for eyeshadow, uh, michachol, as is well known in common in the sages' words, and its name in Arabic as well, alkohol. Um, oh, alcohol. <laughs> no, I, I, I doubt that that's a real thing. Um, the verse is thus, uh, it makes me wonder if alcohol comes from Arabic. Yeah, I, don't know. I wonder, yeah, sure. Um, uh, uh, the verse is saying that Judah would be eye colored by wine, for as others color their eyes with eyeshadow, which is, uh, which is al kuhul, he would paint his eyes with wine. Verse continues and says that as others whiten their teeth with creams, Judah would whiten them with milk. The metaphor uh, of this refers to an abundance of wine and milk that Judah would have in his land, as Uncle has mentioned. Okay. So it's not talking about Jude, you know, the people in Yehuda being drunk. It's talking about the fact that they're going to have an abundance of wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Chaim? Yeah, I, I just looked it up. Uh, it does come from Arabic, Arabic oh. and French. Okay, interesting. Does, it doesn't say uh, Shorash, though, for what the Arabic oh, meaning cool. is? Uh, cool. uh yeah, uh, El El Kuhu. Yeah, does it say what Kuhu means? Uh, the Kuhu. So no. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. It could be coming from the same expression, right? I mean, Arabic and Hebrew are very related. Yeah, interesting. Okay, um, okay. I think let's stop early here because uh, there's a door meeting. I also have to uh, um, uh, uh, stop. <laughs> okay, um, but uh, let's just summarize what we have here. So we have. Um, one approach, which is that these are all external signs of a person who has an unhealthy, really unhealthy relationship with alcohol. I'm going to say alcohol every time I think of it. And it's saying, don't get so locked into the way that you're defining yourself, like it says in 30. And I'm learning 30 as like a sophisticated way. Don't get so locked into that, that you fail to see how other people perceive you. 
And then once you see that, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like that guy, you know, and it has that rhetorical punch. Uh, and that's a warning about all addictions. Uh, that's a technique you can use to spot all addiction, not all addictions, but many addictions. That's that. And then there's my interpretation, which is that this is uh, symptoms of the unfettered ego that are all, um, and, and alcohol unfetters your ego. Uh, and then there's Rubenio Yona, which, which even though we didn't get a full idea out of him, he does, I think it is worth noting, he connects it to uh, the sexual, which is that, you know, there are many taivas that are in isolation, but then there are taivas that get you into other taivas. So for example, money is something that can get you into other taivas because you can afford to indulge in stuff and then that can awaken other taivas. So here, alcohol can easily get linked up into the sexual and then that can lead to a whole host of other problems. So I think that's a noteworthy point on its own. Okay, so obviously we're going to develop this more uh, lean editor next week because we're going to look at the other uh, the other psukim uh, and then hopefully we'll get a Derek Minister. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay.